Jamie did an oopsie. Tingle Tap did an oopsie. Fred's voice did an oopsie. And you're watching Snooze News. the most. 
most disliked video of her entire ASMR career or YouTube career for, as that, for that matter as far as I know. It was about 20% dislikes which is huge for her because usually it's probably about 1% dislikes for her content so you can tell people were not you know just from that number you can tell a lot of people didn't like this so so why obviously a lot of comments were people saying like hey I can't afford this or hey like why not just get YouTube premium which is only a two dollars more for pretty much the same thing except for it's for all of YouTube not just ASMR on YouTube and like hey Netflix is almost the same price hey this is the same price hey this 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 that's pretty expensive I can't afford that and so on so we're gonna talk about the price first because it's by far the most talked about part it's what everyone is complaining about I don't think anyone out there dislikes the idea of the app it sounds like a nice app all those features are very welcome and I would enjoy using those but the price point just feels too high for what is being offered ten dollars a month you know, a handful of creators' videos for slight quality of life features. Really, the only feature that stands out to me as something worth paying for is downloading videos from offline play for just the occasional time where, you know, you're out and you want to watch ASMR, but you don't have Wi-Fi, and you're like, oh shoot, I guess I'll watch some of my pre-downloaded videos. How often are you in that situation? If your answer is very often, then this might be worth it to you. So the price point is seen as pretty high to everyone that's really kind of the big thing and i do agree with that i think it's a little high i don't think it's bad for them to charge with this app i think this is something worth paying for there's so clearly a lot of work has gone into this there's a lot of quality creators that are on there pretty much all the big ones except for where's my boy fred's voice at huh if you smart something you watch on a regular basis it makes sense to pay for this kind of thing you know you get so much out of asmr watching these videos every night that it's kind of crazy you're able to do all that for free. Like, for, for me, I've watched ASMR since I found it, like, seven years ago. And I haven't paid a dime to watch it. I paid a, I paid a pretty penny to make it, but I paid absolutely nothing to watch it all this time, right? It's free to consume. And I think that's where it becomes weird, because people are so used to it being free. Everyone is doing this for them for free. So why would you pay $10 a month for it? Here's why the app exists, and that is YouTube's dumb sometimes, and by sometimes I mean a lot of the times, and a lot of videos get demonetized, people don't get their notifications, even I'll experience some videos that should do well but really don't, and people will say like, oh wow, I didn't even, this one never even popped up for me, and I'm just like, what? How often does that happen that I post a video and my notification people don't get notified? Why? So you're getting demonetized while also YouTube kind of cutting your views down because they're not notifying your subscribers all the time when you're posting. And so you're getting less views for no good reason and less money for no good reason. So it makes perfect sense to me. I understand why people are upset about the price point, but I also understand why the creators are kind of like, hey, we gotta put a price point to make this actually worth it for all of us. So I get it. But here's something that I have a problem with. And it's something that I've been seeing a lot over pretty much the last five years of YouTube. It's this dirty little word that creators like to throw around, not to say smartists, everyone. And that is the word support. If you want to support me, sign up for my Patreon. If you want to support your favorite creators, download our app and pay the subscription fee. If you want to support this, support that, thanks for supporting me, thanks to my supporters. And don't misunderstand me, I mean support in those contexts. Not one like, like, anyone that subscribed to me is supporting me, and I thank everyone for their support, and just supporting me, kind of emotionally, or encouraging me, and kind of, uh, hey, we like your videos, like, that's supporting me. But I'm talking about when creators throw on the word, like, hey, support me, you know, on my Patreon, thanks for supporting me you want to support your favorite creators, you know, then sign up for premium this, premium that. And people always would say, like, you know, like on the Tingles app, which I will talk about in a second here, um, the Tingles app, there's a support button, which is basically $5 a month for this creator that lets you download their videos for offline play and some other stuff. Um, support. But there's money behind that. So the meaning behind support and the meaning 
behind pay is kind of been blurred where you have these creators that have two plus million subscribers get several millions of views on every video they post three times a week not naming any names but i'm sure you can think of a few that match this description who are probably making truckloads of money and not probably we know that they are right and yet you know hey support my patreon thanks for supporting me and they're asking their viewers who are majority wise younger people because that's what just the majority of youtube is is younger people that work either normal jobs or don't work this is something i've talked about in the past when i talked about how i didn't like the uprising of patreon how every channel ever has a patreon now and it's like hey Thanks for watching my videos, but if you want to support me, go ahead and pay me monthly for doing what I do. And I have a Patreon, okay? I have one. I really don't talk about it much, but I have one because people do want to financially support me sometimes. And people ask and they say, how can I support you? Like, I have money that I would like to send to you to help you because I know that you're a small channel and you don't make much money doing this, but I want to see you continue to do this. Now, that is support. That's support. As someone that needs support getting support but when you're making six figures plus a year to make videos on the internet it's no longer supporting you're not like molding them up helping them get along you're just throwing money on top of their piles of money and it stops being called support anymore it's just pain so with all that said i want to kind of bring my point back around and say hey don't sign up for these kind of things do support your favorite creator. Pay the subscription for the features. Do not give huge creators your money. Do support them. They are fine. I myself am very curious to see how this app performs once it's actually launched. If there's substantial upkeep costs on this app. And with all the creators involved. And all the money they get in being split between the creators. Then what? Is this going to last very long? The reason why an app like, say, the Tingles app is able to last is because the app is free to use to a point. There's a lot of extra stuff you can do to pay for and tip and, you know, support, also known as pay your creators a monthly fee to support them. And all of which the app itself takes like 30 or 40 percent um, to them. So they're making money off of creators um there's a video out that kind of very dramatically goes through a bunch of things about the tingles app and you know with the dramatic music and the dramatic talking and the intense eye contact it makes it seem a lot worse than it really is so i do want to talk a little bit about gb's involvement specifically and that is this is something that she's been working on for what sounds like more than a year maybe even longer um an idea that she's had for a while the development of an app takes a very long time to actually get it to the point where you actually can have a functioning app all fine-tuned and ready to go and ready to actually go on to the app stores. So I do believe that it's taken a year, possibly longer, from the start of this, from the start of this idea to now. And you can tell from GB's announcement video that she is in fact very, very excited and very proud of this thing. And she announced it, um, probably expecting a more positive response than she received. Um, she's clearly thrilled about this and very, you know, proud of the creation, and, and she should be. You know, it's a, it's a quality thing to actually have come up with the idea for and actually seen it through. That's a big deal. Um, she's a professional. She's a business now. There's a certain point where you toggle from being an individual creator to being an actual business, and GB's very much a business now. Um, whether we like to imagine it's just her or not, she's a business now. It's GB is a brand. And that's fine, you know, she's made a career out of it, and she's trying to continually keep going up as, you know, you should in her position. I think this is a sensible business move for her to make, but it just seems like one that mm, might be doomed to fail. Of course, I hope not. I hope that they're willing to, you know, adjust, you know, possibly the subscription cost or whatever needs to be adjusted in order to kind of appeal to the, the wider audience. And I hope that it can become kind of the middle point between ASMR creators and ASMR viewers, a situation where everybody wins because of this app. The problem is, uh, one of the things that is currently being said a lot in regards to this app is that it is 
by the community, for the community, but in reality it is 90% just for the ASMR creators involved in this app. Some of the questions that I want to address for anyone that's heard of these issues, and that is one person was pointing out that the app requires location data for the user. And the big question was, why does an app like this that is strictly for video viewing require your location to use, as well as other demographic type details? And the explanation there is simply just that that's just how apps are. If they ever wanted to, say, put ads into their, if they ever wanted to create a free version of this app, which I think would be a wise decision to do someday, have a free version with ads, um, they would need to basically apply to advertisers, right? Bring in advertisers, and the advertisers, the first thing they're going to see is viewer data, where they're from, how old they are, what else they're into, the, the demographics of the viewers. And if they don't collect location or user data at all, they will have nothing to show advertisers. So that is pretty much a requirement if they ever want to someday have ads. You have to collect that kind of data. In order to do that, it would be near impossible to get ads or any sort of advertising on videos on an app with zero user data. So I get that it feels weird, but it's kind of like back when everyone was freaking out about how the Facebook Messenger app uses its permissions to your camera and your microphone, and everyone was freaking out about, wow, like Facebook, you know, delete the app, it's recording you, it's, it's filming you, it's listening to you. And it's like, no, in order to be able to take a picture with the app, which is a built-in function, you have to have given it permission to use your camera and microphone to take a photo and or a video. So it's not that the app's recording all the time, it's just that you give it that permission so that it can use that function. People like to blow up the fact that like, oh wow, it can record you all the time, but it's like, it's not though, you know, like, it has access to your camera, but it's not filming you when you're not using the app. You know, it's not like it's just recording you for the for the laughs, you know. Like, in that case, you might as well complain that Apple or just any phone is recording you all the time because that phone always has access to your camera and microphone. So, if you're really concerned about big business recording and filming you, then they have the ability to do it 24-7. So, why nitpick a single app that uses this? Anyway, I'm going on a rant. That annoyed me when that happened because I used that app all the time and I was like, why is everyone suddenly mad about this when it's such an obvious explanation? So I want to put a fair on that before anyone blows up weird allegations about the disease app. They're not doing anything shady. It's a very, like, well-made and fair app. It's just a little pricey. That's really the only problem it has. There's nothing, there's nothing legally kind of weird here. Like, they're uploading all of their videos directly to the app or directly to the servers, I'm assuming, on the app. So they're not linked to YouTube. It's actually the same video, but re-uploaded to um, the app, not through YouTube server. So it's no, they're no longer underneath YouTube's terms of service or guidelines or anything. So even if it's the same video, um, it will be under their own rules. They'll own all the rights to these videos on this app. So, yeah, you know, in response to how the Tingles app links them and breaks a bunch of rules by doing that. The Seas app was smart enough to know the rules and not do that. So props to them for that. Something I forgot to mention is one of the things advertised with this app is that there will be Seas exclusive videos only for the app. So creators will be creating videos that don't go to YouTube, that go just to the Seas app. And of course they've said, you know, oh, we're going to still do a YouTube just the same. We're just going to add extra videos to Seas. But I wonder if in the world where Z's is successful, if we'll see a lot of creators start pulling content from YouTube, as in, instead of uploading three times a week on YouTube, they start uploading maybe once or twice, and then upload once or twice to Z's, you know, per week, that kind of thing. Of course, that's in a world where Z's is actually financially viable and worth it for the creators to keep creating content for, which, you know, I have my doubts about, but I would be very interested to see. Of course, it is a slippery slope here to become basically a, uh, hey, all the best stuff is now behind a paywall kind of uh, corporate idea here, where we basically are creating the EA of ASMR, which is, ooh, not a good thought. And I think that's why I wanted to talk so much about this, is because this is a unprecedented thing in good and bad ways, where it is very cool that ASMR creators have rallied together to create a alternative to YouTube 
but it is a, like I said, dangerous and slippery slope. YouTube's all about free and accessible content, and we're trying to have our sweet little ASMR friendly neighborhood kind of start to go the route of big business, and um, that's kind of why I don't think it'll stick, because if it would work, then why doesn't someone like, you know, why don't all the Fortnite players rally together and make a Fortnite video app where they do the same subscription model and they make more money than YouTube? Because it's not viable. It's not going to be more money than YouTube. It might be a little extra money, but that extra money has to beat out how much it is to, how much it costs to maintain the app and actually pay everyone involved in the app. So in order for Z's to be successful, it has to be very popular, which so far it's looking like it might not be very popular. It's not a very popular idea right now. I'm very curious to see how many people actually sign up for it. I back my fellow creators. I think it's a nice idea. If you know they can find enough people that are willing to pay, I think there's definitely people out there that would find that you know worthwhile to them. If ASMR is a big part of their life and they would get a lot to use out of those features and they want those exclusive videos or whatever, those kind of people will be out there and I'm very curious to see if there are enough of them to support this app. All that being said, um, best of luck to GB. Um, let me know your thoughts below about what you think about the app. Thank you for watching Snooze News. I will see you next time. This is your captain, signing